Hey everyone, welcome to this Facebook Live. I am Bess McCarty, coach for Network Marketers Business and Life, and also called the Shrink of MLM. And this is the Ask Bess video column. I come to you every Saturday and Sunday at noon Eastern Time, right here on Facebook Live on the Bess McCarty page. And this is a show where you can ask questions here or private message me if you want it to be anonymous. And this can be questions about anything in life, a chance to get coached. And it could be about um, network marketing, it could be about careers, it could be about job, family, communication, relationships, health, weight loss, spiritual fulfillment, any of these things. And my message to you is you matter. I hear you. You're not alone. I'll respond. <laughs> You're bigger than any problem that is before you. There's a solution to every problem, and it's often very close within reach. And I'll help. I have a four-step real conversation self-help method that I will teach after I cover the topic for today. So who am I to be doing these shows? Well, for 30 years, I've been a holistic health practitioner and a body-mind therapist and a coach, um, helping people with better, have better businesses and better lives. My niche, though, the last 10 years has been network marketers because I was one. <laughs> I was a full-time network marketer for years as I raised my son as a single mom. And I really have a feel to help network marketers. You guys are my greatest heroes. You face yourselves daily. We know this is a personal growth business disguised as a personal growth program disguised as a business. But then so is uh, marriage, parenthood, <laughs> you know, any, any anything in life, any job that we really have can be... Um, very fertile, powerful grounds for personal and spiritual growth. So um, that is uh, what I'm here for, to help facilitate, to share a bit about what I have learned in my years and see if these tools can help you to make your way easier through life, to solve problems and to be who we really are. So that's what, what I'm going to talk about today too. And welcome Nancy, good to see you. Thank you for being on. And if, if um, someone here is watching the replay, please type that in because I would like to thank you for that and also like to hear where you're from. Now I'm going to be um, sharing that four-step method with you, Real Conversation, as soon as I cover the topic for today and actually show you how that in the process of doing that, you will actually be learning the four-step process. So let's see. I think we've covered everything. going to dive right into the topic for today. And that is the question has come to me, how do I overcome fear? Who has ever felt afraid? <laughs> Please type in yes, because I want you to know you're not alone. And I want everybody else that reads the comments and on the show to know that they're not alone. We all do, right? That's our human condition. I think there's either, there's either love or fear. And the default many times, if it's not intentional, is to default to fear, worry. That can look like... Um, overwork out of out of uh, fear that you know I, I, I am not doing enough it can look at like trying to control other people control issues it can look like addictions clinging on to something um, it can look like um, um, miscommunication relationship problems a lot of times fear gets into there and messes them up so fear can mess up our life I think there's either there's either love or fear and we can't be in both and uh, that it's a choice Yes, we can have a little a little bit of both at the same time, but love overcomes when we say, okay, I'm afraid, but I'm going to go forward anyway. I'm afraid, but I'm going to find out a solution. I'm going to ask for help anyway. And that's when love trumps. You know, we can still, we can still feel afraid or worried as we go forward, but the love is greater because we're going to find a solution. We're going to find help. We're going to find a way. We're not going to settle. So, um, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone watching here um, now or on the replay is getting benefit um, or that you, you know someone who might be able to benefit from this, I'd love if you tag comment, tag them in the comments or share in another Facebook group that could be watching this live with us at the same time. That would be a cool way of getting outside our box and sharing. So fear comes in all of these forms. I think it shows up for me, if I'm honest with myself, a whole lot every day. You know, am I, am I doing enough? Am I doing too much in a relationship? How do I reach out? How do I speak to the person? Um, will I have enough in my life? Will I have enough health? Will I have enough 
money? Will I have enough time? Will I have enough resources? Will I have enough support? All of these things, you know, we're vulnerable, mortal, not really. We're not really mortal for those who believe that we live beyond this body. We're not really mortal. But while we're here in this body, it is mortal. <laughs> and we might worry about health, money, you know, is there going to be enough money to pay, you know, enough money to cover the month? Is there um, enough time or energy? Is there enough of, of um knowledge? Do I know enough to be successful in my business or in my network marketing business? Do I have enough skills? We worry about all these things. Or what will people think of me? If I'm going, if I'm a network marketer, I want to go out and talk with people. We worry, well, what, what will people think of me? What if they don't like me? What if they reject me? So these are all fears that can happen in, in, in our lives. I think it, it, it covers such a huge multitude of things that if we can handle fear, then we've pretty well got it, don't we? If <laughs> they say the only thing to fear is fear itself, not life, not the things that happen to us. And this is how I'm going to explain this in just a minute. So these are my, um, I do have one tip that I want to share, one major tip that helps me overcome fear. And I'll share that in just a minute. First, I want to share the, the, the three things that I realized on the way to that that have helped me tremendously. All of a sudden I feel free of 90% of the fear that, that I unconsciously, subconsciously carried along with me. And welcome Curtis, good to see you, thank you. Thank you everybody who's jumping on. And some people I may not even know who's on, but if you, um, if you type yes, I'm here, then, um, then I'll know. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> good afternoon. Or good morning, we're part of the world that you're in. Okay, so the, the, the three realizations that help me to replace fear with love is, one, that I realize there seems to be a purpose to all things in life. Every th single thing that occurs to me, there's a good purpose for it. And the way I came to that realization is I began to list all the scary things or traumatic things that have ever happened in my life. Losing a loved one, losing a relationship, um, um, breaking my arm when I was a kid, dislocating my wrist when I was an adult, um, the things that can happen, that, that can happen to us, um, being let go from a job, um, let's see, health, wealth, and love, I think I've covered that, you know, losing, losing love and death or relationship, you, losing health in some way. Now, many of you have had that. Many of you have had traumatic um, health experiences or going through some right now. And how you know, does that, um, we, we usually find that when, when we go through an experience, if you look back and say, what did I learn from that? How was that experience a gift? How did it grow me spiritually or personal growth? What gift did that traumatic experience have? Um, I know someone that just got released from the hospital after an emergency surgery. There's a gift in that. There's a gift somewhere in that, that life brings us, my experience anyway, is that life brings us these things to grow some part of ourselves that we couldn't have otherwise. I know that when I um, fractured my elbow, um, I had, um, I, I couldn't do certain things. And all of a sudden I had more compassion for people who were disabled. I was a young person in my time, I think in my 30s at that time when that happened. I thought, you know, I've always been such a fast-moving person. I like to speed around slow people, you know, in the grocery store or on the freeway or something like that. And all of a sudden, I became a slow person. You know, I couldn't drive as fast. I couldn't, um, and I, I uh, one time stepped on a stingray in California, so I couldn't, I had to use crutches. I couldn't walk as fast. <laughs> I couldn't do things as fast when I've injured myself a few times, a good number of times. It slowed me down and helped me have compassion for the people who can't. And maybe to lend a hand rather than speed around them, stop and offer help. So it, it made me more compassionate. That's one of the things, <laughs> just one of the things that happened um, in those cases. So the reason I say that number one realization of mine, that I realize there's a good purpose in all traumatic, in all problems, all challenges, all traumatic situations that happen. It's because I've gone back and I've found them in my life. So if, if, you, if you don't believe that, you might go back and 
<clears throat> and look and see in your life and see, does that prove out for you too? Or does it look like things just happen for no good reason? You did not learn anything from it. You did not gain anything from it. So many times I found that, you know, I have a hard head and life has to really get my attention or take away some some gift that I had, which was speed, <laughs> you know, wanting to move back, a lot of energy and speed and wanting to move back through life. So life had to take that away for me to learn the compassion for the people who don't have it. That's just one of the things. So by going back and looking at the gift, the learning, the teaching, that what I gained from each tough experience, I've concluded that there's a good purpose in all things that happen. And my personal experience of life is that it wants me to develop and grow into a better person than I was, a more loving person, a more service person, um, uh, that, you know, in all the different aspects that it has, maybe to learn a certain skill or something like that. But life wants me to be all that I can be because I'll enjoy myself more. And it wants me to, um, um, I know that when I live to my full potential and contribute to life more, I'm happier. And life wants that for me. So it provides these experiences for it to happen. Remember when we set a goal and life says, okay, you want that thing? Okay, we got to get you polished up for that. we got to get you in training for that. You want that thing? Okay. First we have to get you, you know, put you through this boot camp. First we have to put you through kindergarten and first grade and second grade <laughs> if you want that thing. You want that relationship? Let me bring you experiences that can help you, that can train you and polish you and get you ready for a relationship like you say that you want. You want success in life? Okay, let's put you through some classes so that you can have these experiences to get that thing. We say we want that thing, then we get complaining. We complain when we get the training to get that very thing that we asked for. So that is my uh, experience with, with the first one. And welcome, um, Kawaha, if I'm saying your name right. And welcome, Robin. <laughs> I apologize if I'm, I'm not getting any people's names right. Uh, and welcome, Patty. How are you, hon? Good to see you. Okay, so number one is that helped me to deal with fear. I'm sharing three realizations and one technique. First, the realizations. Number one. Um, that there is a good purpose for all things that happen to me. Therefore, I don't need to be afraid. If, the, if it's for my spiritual good, then, then I just don't need to be afraid, do I? So welcome, everybody. Glad to see you. If you have ever experienced fear in your life, please type yes, because then we'll know that we're all not alone, right? We've all, we're all human. We all experience this. Okay, so number one realization is a good purpose for everything that happens. Therefore, if it's for my benefit, what, what do I need to be afraid of anymore? Number two that life will bring me only exactly what is perfect for me at that time, at, my, at that level, and nothing more. If you think, if, we, if, we, if I realize that life could overwhelm me and bring me more than I could handle to where I go insane or something like that, but it doesn't. It brings me just what I can deal with today. And I trust now, I've observed this, and I trust now that if it brings it to me, I must have the strength or resources or help or something like that to deal with it or it wouldn't have brought it to me. It's that perfect. And here's an example in nature where this shows up too. The sun is how many billion, million or billion miles from Earth? I, I could have looked that up for this show, but okay, it's so many, the Earth is, this, the sun is so many million of miles away from Earth, right? And it keeps us warm, but does not burn us. And this earth planet, the earth is that far from the sun. Did you know that if the earth was just one mile closer to the sun, we would burn up? And if the earth was just one mile farther from the sun, we would freeze. Life could not exist either way. But there's this perfect, perfect balance in between that puts the earth in the exact sweet spot for the sun for life to be here and it's kept it that way for millions of years something bigger than us is keeping this in place so that we can live and have life here on earth remember just a little closer we'd burn up a little farther away we'd freeze something is keeping it just perfect and I've experienced that in my life life brings me challenges not too much that I you know can't meet them and not too little that I'm bored and not growing, but it's just right. 
and I've learned the same thing that keeps the sun in that exact same position, perfect position, for optimal life on earth and possible life on earth and optimal, is the exact same thing that brings me exactly what I need every day for challenge, challenge but not too much. It's exa and it brings it the right cycle in my life, the right day, the right year. It's uncanny when you look back and see the pattern of things. So that's the number two realization that I have, that whatever does come to me, first of all, there's a really good purpose for every single thing, every single challenge. Number two, that the challenges that come are the right amount, the right kind, and the right timing. They're exactly perfect for me. If you look at your life and notice a pattern about that or do any journaling, I think you'll find that without exception. So number two is that, that what does come is perfect for you, for me, I'll say. And number three realization that I had is that I have all the help that I need to meet those challenges, that it's within reach. Maybe I need to humble myself and ask for help, get a coach, go to a counselor, a minister, a friend, a, a, a mentor, a trusted person, an expert, a doctor. Maybe I need to go ask for help. Maybe I need to just look around myself and use my own brain or muscles and walk and walk to that thing and get it because <clears throat> it's right there. <clears throat> I've had so many people um, ask me, you know, that um, um, have been like 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 on my mailing list. You know, where is where do I find this or that? And if they just read the emails that I send every week, it's all right there. You know, we need to often just take our own initiative and look. Look on the internet. Google it. Uh, um, if you don't know the answer, <laughs> Google seems to have it. There seems to be a YouTube for everything. So in other words, every single thing that we need to learn is within our reach. And if it's something that isn't discovered or invented yet, guess what? You might be the inventor of that thing. You might get a dream of how to invent that thing. You might get an intuition or a nudge or try an experiment like Edison did and, and be the one to invent it or bring out a new tool or a new app that hasn't been done before. So it can come outwardly. You know, the answer, the resources can come outwardly from a person or it can come within from life itself, from our own inner intuition and inner guidance itself. And that is the thing that the tool, the te technique that I wanted to share today. The technique is to tap into your inner guidance. Your intuition, your, in your, your inner guidance, your intuition, this is something that's been written about for years and people have stories all over the place about things that have popped into their mind. Um, one story I can share with you, well, but I, first, first I want to say that we all have this. It isn't gifted people. It isn't exception, exceptional people. Well, that's good for them. They can do that, right? We all have this. And we can cultivate it. And we can grow it. Um, it's an incredible resource because if, if you can tap into this, this inner guidance, you never need to be afraid of another thing, right? Um, a story that I could share. And... And welcome everybody. I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to read the, the names here. Nancy says yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Who was the takeaway so far? Something that, that you got benefit from. Love to hear what, what, it, what is important to you. And it also helps summarize the, the live for people to read the comments afterward. Okay, so the story about the intuition, this guy. This guy. This was a um, man in Nigeria who wanted to visit... A, a, a school friend, they got separated, uh, uh, went different ways, different path, pathways after they graduated from, from high school. And uh, so this fellow, this friend lived about eight hours away and had not been in touch because he, he, at that time, you know, he, um, anyway, they had lost touch. So, so this, this friend, John, wanted to go visit his high school friend. And it would be a surprise. He had um, no address for him, but it was a town, um, not too large of a town. And he just said, well, I'm just going to go there. I'm going to see somebody I know there, and then they'll, they'll know him. And he had enough money at that time for a one-way ticket. So he arrives there at the arrival platform, and there's like a thousand people milling around, and he is... All, he does not see somebody that he knows there. And all of a sudden he goes, man, was I 
dumb. That was complete folly to think that I could, you know, run into somebody who would know him. And I guess at that time in Nigeria, there was not communication to communicate directly with John except by letter, and they and they and John did not write, so he did not have an address. Um, so through through these means, it forced him <clears throat> to tune into his inner guides. This is how it happened. Um, he goes, man, you know, that that was complete folly that I, I get here and I only have a one-way ticket and I can't get home and all this stuff. But he was in a corner and he was just sort of leaning against a building thinking, about how, you know, what's he going to do now? <clears throat> when this inner voice said, take that bus. And he said, what? There's like 20 buses. He goes, that one, yeah, that one right over there, take that bus. So it's like 20 voices, 20 buses. And he goes, okay. He got nothing better to do, right? No other option. He, you know, kind of up against a wall, so he just followed his inner guidance. So he gets on the bus, and he notices that when people want to get off the bus, they just knock, you know, their knuckles on the ceiling, and the bus driver knows to pull over and let them off. So he's riding along, and all of a sudden, the nudge says, "Get off here." So he knocks, you know, on the ceiling. Uh, bus driver stops. He gets off. <clears throat> He approaches a T intersection, and the voice says, go left here. And he goes, okay. And by this time, he's kind of amused and thinking, you know, I don't even know where I am and, <laughs> you know, where, where this bus was taking me. And, I, don't, you know, but what else have I got to lose, right? So he turns left, and after a couple blocks, he does see someone he knows who he was looking for before. You know, I'm going to find somebody I know in this town. He finds somebody he knows, and they exchange pleasantries and all that. And John says, you know, by the way... I am here uh, to visit my friend Jay, but I don't know where he lives. And the guy does a double take, and he he just, you know, he turns around and he goes, right there, <clears throat> just a few feet from us, is Jay's, the, the door to, to Jay's apartment. <laughs> Can you believe that? So he opens, the Jay, Jay, he opens, Jay opens the door, and he goes, how did you find me? He goes, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> That is an example of inner guidance in action. We all have it. We can develop it. We can cultivate it. And I was just thinking, wouldn't these be worth a million dollars to you, to me, to, to be able to buy an app like this that could always give us the right answer for any problem that we had in life? Wouldn't, that, wouldn't, wouldn't an app like that or a talent like that be worth a million dollars to us? Well, we have it for free. If we, if we develop that. And I understand that if I simply develop an inner conversation with myself, with my higher self, or with my spiritual guidance, or guardian angel, or whatever people might call this thing, it's called many different things, your gut level feeling, your intuition, I don't think it's really in the brain. I think it's in the gut, in our gut level feeling about things, in our inner in our guidance about things. What if we develop that and um, be able to have an ongoing conversation. What do I need to do now? I need to do, you know, six things on my plate. Which one is the most important or urgent to do now? And some things might completely surprise you. The other day, actually, I was, I went to my nephew's soccer game. I thought that my brother and his wife would attend, uh, but they had just finished um, coordinating and cleaning up after a big festival in our town. And so just his wife came and she said that my brother Tom was still at the fe at the, the the festival grounds, you know, it was the day after and they were they were just rounding up loose ends and everything to take care of the after after needs of the festival. And I said, "Oh, darn it, you know, I wish I wish he had um I would be able to see him." Well, I drove home, but for some reason I took a different turn. I thought, "Why did I take this turn?" And all of a sudden I realized I was driving by the big park where the festival was held. And as I did, I happened to look over to the left, and there were three men way back there in the park. And one of them had gray hair and looked a little bit like my brother. I passed it off, and I thought, wait a minute, Bess, what if that was my brother? You know, would that be worth a few minutes? i got a few minutes now. So I actually turned around, drove into there, and it was my brother. <laughs> had no clue, you know. And uh, so we hugged and said hello and and uh, it talked for a few minutes, visited a few minutes, and then I was on my way. But my, my wish to see him that day um, happened, not through my mind. I was not 
consciously saying, okay, the park is here, I turn nothing. It just it just came that way. It just happened. Um, so sometimes we can put out that wish and then be willing to follow our nudges. Um, so we can, um, that to me is my technique of how I, my main technique I wanted to share today about how I overcome fear is to tune into this inner guidance. Remember that it's there for all of us. We can develop it. We can ask, what should I do now? We're in trouble. We're in big trouble. You know, car breaks down at this side of the road. Um, I'm in big trouble. Um, what what should I do now? What's what 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 can I do? And maybe it's a logical step, or maybe it's something you completely hadn't thought of before. What well, could come in? And if we develop that, then what? What need do we have to fear anything in life, right? Especially with these other accompanying three things that I mentioned, that there's a good purpose for all things, that um, everything that comes to us is perfect exactly for our, for our spiritual need and growth, and that all the help that we need to solve it is at hand. I hope that this show is a, um, a, solves a need for the people watching. That is my desire that I can share the four steps of real conversations with self-help method, which is we have a problem, we might um, have a, we discover the emotion underneath that problem, then we discover the need that's under that emotion, and then we find a way to meet that need. So if we look and see, well, you know, the fellow who got, um, who arrived in, in that town in Nigeria, um, his need was to find his friend, his emotion was he felt embarrassed or foolish, but his, his need, I'm sorry, yeah, his need was to um, somehow, yeah, okay, so his problem was, his problem was lost, right? His emotion was feeling embarrassed, and his need was to find his friend. His solution that happened was he just relaxed. He leaned against a building. He took it easy. And he allowed that inner voice to speak, and he then trusted it and followed it. So that was his solution. So in real conversations, you can take any problem and go from the problem to the find the emotion underneath it, the need under that, and you meet that need. Because every problem is really a sign of an unmet need. Did you know that? So this is my life mission, to teach real conversations to people. And I put this um, in, uh, there's some free tools that I will post in the link below. Free tools where you can get this and learn this. There is a chart, a 30-minute audio radio program, and um, emails that get sent to you so that you can learn this method and you can journal yourself through it. And I also de developed a class. It's on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I have a class called Real Conversations for people who want more help, where you can get on and you can get live group coaching in a, in a group. And for people who want private work, I do, I do private coaching as well, very, very deep work with people, singular sessions and programs of sessions. Uh, so message me if you'd like information on any of that. The Real Conversations class will be in the link below so you can explore that yourself. Love to have you Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 90 minutes, confidential, not recorded. You can hop on, get coached, or learn from all the people that get coached on the class. So it's a personal growth class that for people who maybe aren't feel they aren't ready or want to afford private coaching or counseling, and I created this class for you. For people who like the Real Conversations tools and want to dive deeper into it, and also into the inner child work that I do with people. So every solution has a problem. Remember that. It's not far from you. You don't have to do it alone. I'll help can speed up your personal growth. That's what we're here for, to help and serve each other. Um, this is what people are saying about that class. Maria Miners, I recently joined Bess's Real Conversations class. I've done a lot of um, programs, classes, coaching and all, therapy in my life, but last night I got a new understanding of the cause of my problem and what to do about it. I have to say I was pleasantly surprised, wowed even, by the attention, the insight, the skilled coaching Bess gives to each and every student. She's sparkly and has a lot of depth. I'm absolutely certain that this investment will pay off in huge dividends. So thank you, Maria, for being in the class, and thank you for that, that vote of confidence there. Um, 
Yeah, I, I mentioned yesterday that, that the puppets would come on. I think I'll save that for another day just to keep this video not so long. But um, come back next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, for the Ask Bess video column. And the puppets want to come back and teach about accountability. How, you know, if there's a gap between what you say you want to do, you want to work out and you don't, or what you, whatever you say that you want to do and don't, there's a gap there, the puppets want to help with that. So they'll come back on next weekend. I also am going to be interviewing some wonderful people. But you can find all this at the Ask Best Show every Saturday and Sunday at noon Eastern Time here on Facebook Live on my page. So you're welcome back. You're welcome to leave me a question if you'd like that answered. Uh, let me know if you want it to be anonymous or if I can use your name. You can private message me on Facebook or leave a comment below. So this is this is your opportunity to do that. I'm glad to have you do that. And welcome Sam. Glad to see you. Oh, by the way, if anyone would like to be on my text reminder list for this show, then just please, please private message me uh, where, where I should send that to. And I will remind you so that you won't, have to, you won't have to remember it. And if you're free, you can watch, and if not, you can watch the replay. Okay, be glad to um, put you on my list. Uh, some, it's a growing list, and be glad to add you to it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next time.